Good morning, YouTube. I hope you had a wonderful week with your students. Today, I'm finally going to be talking a little bit more about another way I ditch a worksheet. And today, my students are reviewing for our mathematics and chemistry quiz that they have tomorrow. What better way to do that than by using a concept map? So I am going to show you the artifacts that my students create today, how I go about creating concept maps and designing them for students, and basically when I use them in my classes. So I'm going to go get those copied and then I'll come back and I'll talk a little bit about how I use them in my class and then I'll show you what my students do today. Well, unfortunately, after I checked in with you this morning, I did not have time to follow up with you about um, you know, how I use these concept maps in my class. So I thought now would be the time. It's the end of the day. Um, I had a really nice day with my students. They were very engaged in the activities of today. Um, and so naturally I thought now would be a good time to catch you guys up on what's going on. As I mentioned, I was doing some cards work concept maps with my students. And this is one of my favorite ways to ditch a worksheet. I love the concept maps because I was just so tired of worksheeting the students and giving them, for example, like just another worksheet, another assessment review for them to work on. And so I decided, let me kind of come up with something a little bit more engaging that still offers the ability to practice, but also help students to see the bigger picture. And so from that, I started creating these concept maps. So this obviously isn't a concept map, but this is essentially what I give the students. I take the terminology from our unit, like for example, this is specific to significant figures. I take the terminology and then I take some descriptors and sometimes, as I mentioned, I'll include example problems and I print them on a piece of paper and I have the students arrange the terminology, descriptors, and problems on a large piece of um, like poster type paper. So you could do like the 3M poster type paper with like the um, adhesive backing. You could also do like large construction paper. Now I typically do this whenever I'm reviewing for a major assessment. I just really like students to be able to see like all the concepts that we've covered and try to like draw connections between the unit. I've also used this in a scenario where the students have a quiz um, and they get like five minutes to review. So you'd obviously have to have all of these um, cards cut out but you can cut them out and have the students sort them and talk about them for about five minutes before their quiz as a quick review, and then the students could take the quiz. Um, but I, I really like it from the perspective of just having them help to see like the bigger picture. That's really the number one way that I personally use it, but I imagine there are many others. The other thing that you could potentially do, like let's say you don't want your students to be cutting out so much stuff, you could potentially, um, for example, like laminate all of the cards and you know, cut them out yourself, and then you could have the students organize them on a whiteboard, or some of you I know use those chalk markers on your like tables. You could have your students you know, design their card sort concept mapped on the tables. I thought one of the things I could show you is like what this would actually look like. So I'm gonna show you an example, some student artifacts from the concept map on my unit menu, because I was using my unit menu, Mathematics and Chemistry, to teach content such as accuracy, precision, um, sig figs, and dimensional analysis. I uh, have a, a section on measurement that incorporates precision and accuracy, so I'll show you what some of the students did for that, and hopefully that'll be a good representation of like what you could potentially do with a concept map. Here's an example of a concept map that my students did for our mathematics in chemistry unit menu. So this was specifically on measurement. Um, I like this concept map because it definitely, you know, has a central idea, right? It was talking about measurement and it kind of grouped things. The only thing that's lacking, which I do find in a lot of the concepts maps, at least at this stage in the game, is that there's not a whole lot of connection between concepts. So in the future, as we do more and more concept maps, I do hope to help the students be able to do that. Um, here's another example of how students chose to talk about measurement. I don't love this one just because, again, it looks a little disjointed. There's not a lot of connection between ideas. Um, I would have much preferred to see like students actually include like how these things are related. They do kind of have a central idea here, but this kind of stands alone. So it would have been nice to kind of group this in, but that's another example. Concept mapping is definitely a research-based strategy that works really well with students. And um, I found it was really difficult to prompt students to actually create a concept map. Like, 
you could just say like, okay, go create a concept map, but it's very difficult for students. So this was kind of my workaround. I wanted to give students an opportunity to be able to create concept maps, but have some of the work done for them. Now you do have the option to differentiate this a little bit. Like for example, maybe you give your students the descriptors but you don't give them the terminology and they have to decide what terminology is missing based on the descriptors. Alternatively, you could just give them the terminology and have them figure out what the descriptors are. So there's lots of options here, depending on how much time you have, you know, the level of students uh, for differentiation, which is one thing that I absolutely love. The other thing is you definitely wanna encourage your students to show connections between concepts. This was the first one that my students did this year. So some of the students weren't entirely clear what a concept map is. Even after showing them some examples, they still needed a little bit more guidance. Um, but my hope is as I incorporate this strategy more and more in the school year, I think it'll get better and better. But I would say the most important thing that you wanna drive home to your students is that they're looking for patterns and looking to draw connections between concepts. Like how does this concept relate to this one? I mean, we as teachers obviously know that certain things in a unit go together, but how can you make it apparent to them that these are the overarching ideas and concepts that go together. I would say drawing connections between concepts is really what helps students to kind of cement this information in their minds so that they don't forget it. All right, well, I think that's it for me. I hope you enjoyed this video on yet another way to ditch that worksheet. If you use this strategy in your class, I'd love for you to tell me about it. Please leave a comment down below. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your weekend and I'll be sure to check in with you all next week.